Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting up a Lord of Pain. In preparation for that giant palaquin chariot, I need to get more experience on these weird skin tones. And well, Games Workshop kind of upped the ante. Now that inside these little blister packs is an actual instruction manual and color guide, which was sorely lacking in some of the Nurgle blisters that came out like seven years ago. So assembly is pretty much straightforward and simple. I mean, it's not really that complicated. Using a razor knife, I remove all excess flash, mold lines, and such and such from each and every single piece. Now, I've assembled the model up to the point where it'll get in the way of painting. Uh, the weapon is separate, the spine thing is separate, uh, mostly simply just because for priming I like to lay them down on the pad and stuff, so that has to be out of the way. The head is separate simply because if I attach it, it's going to be a little hard to paint to the side of it, and of course that little knife is separate. And now with some bright touch general purpose car primer, we're going to now prime the model on both sides. And once that is done, well, while that is actually drying, we're going to be taking Liquitex uh, modeling putty and we're going to be placing a thin layer onto the uh, base. Uh, he has a little bit of a base his own and we're going to add forest and stuff or grass onto it, so we just need a little bit of texture. Now with Dawnstone and Agrax Earthshade, I'm going to be painting the stone on him first. Since this is going to be using dry brushing as a technique and is the messiest, I want to get out of the way first. So we start off with a layer of Dawnstone. Now I try a few things. After Dawnstone, I apply Agrax Earthshade on it. And then I go and I dry brush Dawnstone back onto it, but it's a little too overpowering. And so I try applying some more Agrax Earthshade to bring in some of the depth. Then I try painting Dawnstone directly on its most prominent features or lines. And then I try applying Agrax Earthshade into the recesses. Looking back, this was kind of a mess. It was just me going back and forth trying to add depth and highlighting. What I should have done, I thought it would be easier to do, but I should have done Dawnstone, Agrax Earthshade, a light layer of Dawnstone and then move to like administrative gray, uh, some lighter gray color for the most raised areas and stuff. But how well, live and learn. Alright, with Xerxes Purple, Druchi Violet, and Daemonite Hide, I'm going to then move on to more dry brushing of larger stuff. The flaps on him and his hair. I'm going to start with a layer of Xerxes Purple. And then when that's done, we're going to apply a layer of Druchi Violet all over the flaps front and back as well as his hair and also those little tassels. Um, but it doesn't seem to work out so I use Nuln Oil to darken it further and I apply this directly onto the um, what was it? the flaps he has, loincloths, whatever, and his hair to darken it better and it works out pretty well. I then proceed to dry brush Xerxes purple on it. And then once that's done, I then proceed to dry brush Daemonet Hide on it, a lighter dry brush using side to side to catch the folds and then up and down for the back flap because it has a lot of like in indented symbols and stuff.
The tassels suck and look kind of lame, and compared to the image on the cover, uh, they're not good enough. So with corn red, I go and I'm just going to dry brush corn red onto these tassels to add some more color to them, and they look good. Alright, with Damonette Hyde and, you can't see the name, Cadian Fleshtone, I then go to paint the guy's skin. I saw the what they said on the cover and I was like, nah, they're lying. And so I thought, you know what, I'll try Slaneshi. So I start off with a layer of Damonette Hyde as the base layer on all his flesh. And then I progressively move up into, from Damonette Hyde to two parts Damonette Hyde to one part Cadian Fleshtone. And because this was watered down, I then went back and... Um, applied like painted two coats because of how thin it was is that I would paint one coat with it and without mixing any more Cadian flesh tone I would then paint uh, another highlight again further to add more color in now you have to do it on his face I uh, just picked out the most what his most distinct uh, facial features and stuff and as well as his flesh I kept going up through highlight through highlight uh, the more raised areas because I and mean, it's hard to describe because his flesh is all over the place, the different muscle tones and stuff like that. But after I did two parts Demonet to Cadian, I then went to one to one Demonet to Cadian and then used that as a highlight and did two coats of that. For the hands, I did straight lines so you can see like the tendons and stuff as well as the fingers more highlighted and I progressively covered less and less. I essentially went from covering like maybe 90% then to 85% then to 80% less and less as the layers went by. So I take key slip flesh and I mix it in with the last bit of my mix of Damonet Hyde and Cadian Flesh Tone, like one part key slip to one part of whatever was left of the mix, and I use this to further highlight the face to make it stand out more. But it doesn't look like the cover, and that's because they use like almost all whites. I, I, I don't believe them. I, I don't believe them. And now with Carrionberg Crimson and Lamian Medium mixed one part Carrionberg to two parts Lamian, and then I'm going to apply this on very specific parts of his flesh. So apparently his clothes is actually hooked to his body through piercings. And so the skin, I applied this on to make it look more damaged, more hurt, more injured. And eh, it oh, kind of worked. Uh, I have, because it was so thinned down, I instead uh, applied around two to three coats depending on the area or the size of the place. As well as his face, I applied a little bit into the eyes. I didn't want it to pull too heavily in the eyes and a little bit on the forehead. But make sure it doesn't pull too much on the facial features. I just want to add shadow to the face. And now with corn red and a very fine tipped brush, we're just going to paint these uh, like scar marks into his eyes. Tattoos. And then with Nuln Oil, I'm going to apply a little bit to his eyes and mouth to make him look even more emo. Now with Eshin Grey, Dark Reaper, Nuln Oil, Pallid Witch Flesh, we're going to paint his clothes. With Eshin Grey, the stuff that's going to be black, we're going to paint his boots this, his right and left boot. His right boot has a bunch of metal on it, so it's mostly the back boot and the straps on the back. And once that is done, we're going to take Dark Reaper, which is more of a bluish, and we're going to apply this to his arm strap, as well as his, um, whatever it is, the thing on his leg.
And once that's done, we're going to apply Null Oil to both to darken them. I then go back with appropriate Eschen Grey and Dark Reaper and I just paint on the appropriate stuff. So the black boots will have Eschen Grey, the Dark Reaper will go on the other stuff and I just uh, paint the edges of the folds and the individual pieces of leather. It's okay, but I feel it is off. And eventually what I do is I take a very fine dry brush and I only put paint on the tip and I basically dry brush the leather, uh, the appropriate colors by just having the tiny tip of it and I just do it in one direction to make sure that it doesn't get on anything else. And I basically dry brush Eschen Grey and Dark Reaper onto the appropriate pieces of leather very, very carefully and it works. I then go back with some known oil and apply it directly into the darkest recesses of each piece of leather. And now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, we're going to varnish the model. We're going to varnish what we have painted, because from this point on it's all metals, and so might as well do this now while it's easy and simple to apply. The leather doesn't match the idea I had in my head. I mean, the AK Interactive did what it did, but like... Uh, it just doesn't fit the character, so I'm going to go with some anti-shine matte varnish, which is a lie. It does have shine. It is for metals, but I'm going to apply this sort of as a gloss varnish. It, it's not fully glossy, but it's like somewhat glossy, and I apply this all over the leather to make it shine. Alright, with Lead Belcha, Nolna Oil, Druchi Violet, Lamian Medium, and Stormhost Silver, we are now going to paint one of the types of metal. We're going to start off with Lead Belcha all over the weapon, as well as his shoulder pad, his shin pad, and the blade on his back, various pieces of metal. And once that is done, we're going to take Nuln Oil and we're going to apply it all over. I will then dry brush lead belcher on all the metal pieces we have just painted with null oil. Mm -hmm. 
I then take Druchi Violet and mix it one to one with Lamian Medium and then add a little bit of water to make it run and then I apply it all over the metal. It was too diluted for my tastes. And so in the end, I went back and I just applied uh, real stuff uh, with no dilution. Except maybe just a little bit of water. I then go back with lead belcher and then I dry brush it all over the metal pieces. Especially on the important ones, like the symbol on his chest, I try to dry brush it in a specific angle so it doesn't ruin it. I then dry brush Stormhole Silver all over on the most, rage most raised areas, most raised platforms, open uh, parts of it, and as far as the weapons, on the edges, especially on the spikes, the tips, and stuff like that. And now with Balthazar Gold, Brass Scorpion, and Stormhole Silver, we're going to do the other metals, the brass to silver like metals on him. I start off with Balthazar Gold. However, I am going to note that this was ultimately a waste. If I wanted to do it right, I should have started off with Brass Scorpion, which was a more redder one. I basically went from lighter to darker. I somehow misremembered what Brass Scorpion was. So I would have started with Brass Scorpion and then went to Balthazar Gold. But looking back now, I can say I could have just done this with Brass Scorpion and Stormhole Silver and keep Balthazar Gold completely out of it. I then ap apply Brass Scorpion all over as a highlight, covering 90% of it. But looking back, <laughs> I should have just covered everything and just knocked out the Balthazar Gold. I then go with a 1 to 1 mix of Brass Scorpion and uh, Stormhost Silver, and then I apply this as a highlight, covering around hmm, maybe around 70% of all the metal with it 70 to 60% maybe less it, it depends on the part and this is essentially a highlight and you I wanted to make sure people could see the color so I even have the paint that I'm getting it from mixed in there And when that's done, we're going to do a two parts storm host to one part brass scorpion, and we're going to do this as a finer highlight around like 30 to maybe 50% at most of the model. Now, as far as the giant uh, stomach belt pad thing, uh, we basically do overbrushing with it uh, to pick out the detail and stuff. So we don't spend a lot of time on it, we just do some simple overbrushing to apply it to his giant stomach belt thing. And then, with pure Stormhost Silver, we're going to paint the very final tips. We're basically going to paint the very tips of his pointed shoes, of his uh, pointed, uh, like, I don't know how to describe it, all the horns and stuff. We're going to paint maybe 10 to 15, maybe 25% at most with Stormhost Silver. It's just to pick out the most prominent points. And now with Cantor Blue and Hoeth Blue, I know the light obscures the name, but, so what we're going to do is we're going to use Cantor Blue on all the gems. We're going to start off with a base layer of Cantor Blue. He has one on his stomach, his front pad thingy, his knee, and his right wrist has one. Then we're going to do a two parts Cantor to one part Hoeth Blue onto the gems. Now how we're going to do this is we're going to paint two thirds of the gem this color. The top part is going to be the darkest. Then we're going to do a one to one of Cantor and Hoeth and we're going to paint half of the gem this color 
And then finally, we're going to take pure Hoeth, and with our finest brush, with the paint water just right, we're going to basically paint the entire outer circle of the gym. And now for some assembly. I'm going to use modeling glue and super glue. I assemble almost all the model, including the head, with super glue. Now for the arm and weapon, basically the part of the arm, I'm going to use modeling glue because I want to be able to slide that in correctly. And the part that has the hand attachment, I'm going to put super glue there. So I'm going to use both glues basically. Super glue on the hand and modeling glue on the input. And I'm going to finagle the arm into its slot and then just press the hand into its stub. And uh, it's assembled pretty quickly. And then with a base that I made in the same way I made Sigvold's base, I then applied super glue directly and just attach him onto it. And then with Liquitex gloss varnish, I'm just going to apply this to the gems on it for extra shine. And then for some finishing touches, I take gullum and flesh and then I dilute it, one part gullum and flesh to three parts water, and then I just apply that onto his weapon. There's a little bit of like redness on his weapon in the image, so I decided to copy that. You'll need around two coats of this, one as a base and one extra coat towards the edges of the weapon to make it darker there. And it is done. Man, this one was a bit odd. Uh, I'm not familiar with a lot of these colors and it was mostly an experimentation. Overall, I would give my work a... There are some things that are really good, there are some things that are just meh. His skin is meh. His base is... well, actually meh. His armor, his metal is good. The leather came out great. The gems are pretty sweet. His skin is still meh. Uh, his flaps, are loincloths and stuff, look amazing. They actually look like a 10, just based off, especially the flap on the back looks perfect um i'm gonna say uh, i'm just gonna be conservative and say seven out of ten it could have been an eight but there were a few issues well, first off i don't have most of the colors to really bring out the ethereal paleness on this guy but also um, there are some strange oddities I wasn't able to really get out, so his clothes is actually attached to his flesh via like piercings and hooks. But I wasn't able to really bring out that color and stuff. Like the hooks themselves, I mean with these close up res pictures you can see them, but you can barely like see them. And it's hard to distinguish them without good lighting. And so I couldn't really make the hooks stand out or the flesh that they're attached to stand out that well. Well then I guess the first time I really tried that, so... Eh, my best only goes oh so far. His flesh was a mixed bag. Uh, I mean, it's passable. His face is passable. Uh, but, eh. Eh. I don't know what to say. It's like, hey, I tried new things, and it turned out somewhat okay. The one thing I will say, though, the Brass Scorpion and Stormhost Silver Mix, that was actually pretty good. I'm actually quite happy about that. All right, well... I guess that's all I can say. More to come soon enough. More Slanesh. Uh, like the video if you like the video. Comment if you want to comment on anything. Share it if you can share it. Um, uh, that's it. Uh, this boy is going on eBay because <laughs> I've already got all I wanted out of him. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.